drive down some of these back roads. It's absolutely gorgeous. A place where symbols of hard work and leisure float side by side. A place where many say the lobster roll is worth the wait. It's a place you can really sniff out some fame. That is, if you're a dog. A place nestled in the rocky landscape of mid-coast Maine. A place that an author penned as the prettiest village in Maine. Life is good in Wiscasset. This is Chronicle on WCBB Channel 5. Gentle tides lap the shoreline of Wiscasset, a village of just over 3,000 people. Though in the busy summer months, more than 20,000 a day pass through on Maine's coastal Route 1, many unaware of the beauty and history around them. Why do you think they call this the prettiest village in Maine? A lot has to do with this street we're actually on right here. The houses are original, unique, unspoiled. From the former homes of sea captains on High Street to the vast ocean views, Bill Sutter knows this village well. It's home. Somebody once asked me if I had been here all my life, and I told him not yet. No, not yet, but long enough to see the tides of change ebb and flow. When Peter Mohegan stood here in the 90s, this waterfront looked much different. You can't help wonder why these two schooners are in such bad shape. Eastman Kodak uh, should have paid years ago to have those uh, restored because there are more pictures taken of those boats. Two old schooners, they're gone now. All that's left are the pilings here behind me. But the heart and soul of Wiscasset has remained much the same. First up, the Wiscasset, Waterville and Farmington Railway Museum. A place that not only celebrates the rich history of Maine's Sheepscot Valley Narrow Gauge Railway, it's rebuilding it. The purpose of any railway is to foster community and connection between people, individuals, whole towns, and whole regions. Our goal in preserving and rebuilding the railway is to bring that connection back to life. A rail system that dates back to 1894. It was meant to connect rural interior Maine with the coast. Once called the railway with big dreams and little wheels, the WWNF served the businesses and residents of rural Maine until 1933. The last owner, when he closed the railway in 1933, he tore up the track to pay debts that the railway owed to various companies, but he never sold off the right of way at any point and he never officially abandoned the railway. In the 1980s, an investor decided it was time to rebuild. A man by the name of Harry Percival, as a child, he saw the railway being torn up and his goal was to rebuild it. In the early 90s, the silhouette of history came into sharper focus with the laying of new tracks, the same narrow gauge system that was unique to the area. The idea of the concept of doing narrow gauge is because it costs about one fifth the cost of a standard gauge railroad. The amount of land needed is less. Three miles of track have now been restored and the expansion continues. The engineering here isn't about moving forward, but back to the railway's original form. What is it about this place that draws so many people to volunteer their time? Well, for me and I think many others, it's the, it's the people here, it's the volunteers. This is like a family. It's just a wonderful place. We don't talk politics. All we talk is narrow gauge. <laughs> Why? You just... Because it's cool. <laughs> Eric Shada has been volunteering his time and ingenuity since 2006. The real coach has some fancy fluting in the piece of wood, and we don't have tools to make that, so I made my own tool. From the rails to the cars to the coal-powered engines, all of this the result of three decades now of what some say is a calling. Whenever we have a problem that we need an expert on something, that person seems to show up. We needed to have our bridge inspected. It turns out one of our members was a bridge inspector. If you have a skill, we'll take advantage of it. United by a passion for rail travel, some have been here for decades. This is a 1923 Model T Ford. Paul Barisal is getting his hands dirty after a tour just a few weeks ago that left him wanting more. Make sure we got spark. Are you a mechanic by trade? No. Jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> I, all right, I grew up farming. I've worked in antique cars, antique engines. I've had a steamboat. And you volunteer to do this. Why? 
to keep history alive. When I die, these other guys die, that's it. You can't get new young kids interested in this stuff. All aboard! Or can you? The interactive museum lets guests board the train for a ride through farm fields and rolling hills to incredible destinations, a concert, a hike, and a picnic in otherwise hard to reach spots. And for some, a horse-drawn carriage awaits. Destination, the flowing fields of lavender. Now this is the way to travel. The Wiscasset, Waterville, and Farmington Railway continues to add tracks to new destinations. Every single position is filled by a volunteer, including many who attend yearly volunteer weekends. Helping hands come from around the country to assist with the restoration project.